<clears throat> All right, folks, good morning and welcome to the Coffee Run. It's Friday here in Seattle. It's Friday where you are too, and it's early in the morning. We're going to get a jump into the show uh, kind of quickly today because our guest um, that we have here has got a hard stop for work, just like I do. So um, I'm going to give you a quick look at the, at the show layout here, and then we'll jump into it. So um, we do have some news to share about uh, Crapsy, Windcraps, something I'm going to do with the Windcraps archive. I will do a recap of the daily paycheck at the end of the show. But we're going to kick things off right away, and I'm going to jump into the Gambling 101 series, kind of hardcore. We've been doing this series so far, um, and we've, we've, we've kind of, I don't know, run the gamut of like trying to explain what gambling kind of is and what some of the principles that I think should guide us through being successful, as successful as you can be in this sport of gambling, which is, you know, setting goals, having a solid strategy that kind of accounts for your wins having the bankroll to sustain and manage your losses, the right mindset and the right discipline, I think are key things here. So today's show is going to focus, I think, on mindset and discipline because that is typically where um, you can run into problems. And if you don't have the proper mindset, you don't possess the right discipline early. And honestly, if you're kind of haphazard with everything else, you can have a problem. So uh, I, I, I've got a friend um, who's with us this morning who's going to talk to us about his journey from being um, what he would self-describe as being kind of a problem gambler and to kind of where where, uh, where he is today. And I want to put a, a statement up on screen here before we bring him in and sort of, I, I think this will kind of encapsulate some of this. And it, it looks like this, um, not that one, that one, this one here. Um, problem gambling, we, de we define as making a poor choice when you know better. That is addiction in a nutshell to me. That's whether you're alcoholism, whether it's, gambling, whether it's whatever, you know, porn addic addictions can fall in the same category. You make a poor choice when you quote unquote know better. And there's a chemical problem that's to that too. Um, but it's also just kind of a thing where you kind of get into this, 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 this spin cycle as it were. So um, with that said, I'd like to bring our guest on here and give me a second to change our screen out. And here we go. Uh, good morning uh, to Gargoyle. Gargoyle is joining us today um, to share, to share your story. How you doing, sir? Good morning, John. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm happy to have you here. And I know this is. A, we were talking yesterday over text, and I and I said to you, uh, you know, this is kind of a, a a big deal because sharing your personal story is not easy, you know. And I think it adds a little bit of realism to to where we are, obviously, in, in the world. But also, it's like um, it's cathartic in some degrees too. You know, I, I've shared. My my ugly stories with everybody multiple times here, and it's like it feels good when you're done, but boy, it's tough. So, I want to just turn the floor over to you and 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 ask you to sort of share your, your what I call your origin story, how you got into gambling, but more importantly, when the problems began and how did you recognize the problems? So I'll just I'll just turn the floor over to you. Yeah, thanks. Um, you know, ad addiction is is very weird you have different types of addiction and when it, especially when it comes to gambling there's there's different personas of gamblers and um there are some that they they can't help it they stand outside of the casino and beg for money and as soon as they have some money they run in and 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 gamble with it those are those are like easily identifiable you know this guy's a gambling addict gambling addict but there are there are there are other addicts gambling addicts that they don't know they are and and mm -hmm. i was one of them i was one of them you know i i started with playing poker and playing uh tournaments and and i was okay you know i, I it wasn't an addiction it wasn't a gambling addiction you know i'd win some lose some but when I moved to craps from poker, um, I, I, I didn't know there was no YouTube, there was no help. You know, I started going to the message boards and, and looking at stuff and people started to fill my mind with, Hey, if you do this, you can make a lot of money. If you do this, make a lot of money. So I started doing that and I would go in and lose and somebody else would say if you do this you would win a lot of money so i would i started you know borrowing against my credit cards in order to 
win the money to pay back, you know, what I was, I lost and then make more money. And then guess what? I would lose. And I started going in and listening to folks to win the money so I can pay back my losses so I can break even. And mm -hmm. before you know it, I was, I dipped, I maxed out my credit cards. I started dipping into my savings and I, I, I even took out a personal loan. It, it got to a point where, um, you know, first year, I, I, I lost $130,000, uh, year two, I, I, I lost a little bit over 80,000. This is personal stuff I'm sharing. Um, and my wife didn't know anything about it because based on how our finances were, um, and my addiction was going back to the casino to try and make money so that I can pay back for my losses. Whether it's luck or whether it's fate where I met heavy. And he didn't know about this. He just knew that I was playing the game wrong. And by showing me that there's a right way to play the game and that I got introduced to DI. Uh, and I'm not going to go into what the myths of DI and, and all this, this is not about DI. Sure. I just want to say that the discipline and the knowledge and the money management is what helped me move away from the addiction problem. My gambling addiction was going to the casino, listening to somebody to make money to pay back for my losses and break even. People are doing this today. People do it a lot, of, all, but they don't think they have a gambling problem. It is a gambling problem. It is a gambling addiction. When, when, when you go to the casino and lose money every time, and then you you go to work, work an extra job to make money to go to the casino again, and you go and lose that. You're going to the casino for the wrong thing, and and that's a that's an addiction. That was my gambling addiction. I was going to the casino to play craps, not for the fun of the game, but mm -hmm. it, but because I believed that you could make a lot of money listening to the wrong people. So that's that's the where I want to I want to lean in with you a little bit because that's uh, how do I say this right? So like the the old in the old days, right? You're and you're go, you're 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 calling the old days days where you would go to forums, and for those yes. people who are in the audience who don't know what a forum is, that was before we had YouTube. <laughs> there was like you'd log into a website, you would type in a question, people would see your question, they would answer, and it'd be a big thread of conversations about a thing. That's how you got information in the early days of the internet. Before that. There was nothing. You would, yeah. like uh, my early days, go to the casino and a guy would tell you what to do, or you'd watch a VHS tape of somebody, right? So the advent of the internet in those early days when you had the forums, now you have the first wave of what I would call the self-proclaimed experts coming out and saying, here's what I do. Here's what you should do. And as a new player, you're like, that sounds like a good thing. Let me go try that out. Today, you can go watch YouTube and go, that looks, oh, 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 that's the one. And off I go with my five thousand dollars to to burn a bankroll without realizing it. Was that your experience? Were you were you just so new at the game, and yeah. you're like, this yeah. seems like the way. Like, what got you hooked on? Was it a big win early that got you hooked, or or was it the thrill of winning, or how did you get into the like the first of that um, big loss? Like, how did it start? So I started in craps after a big. Um, big bad beat at the poker table in a cash game mm. and that was at the hard rock in biloxi um i walked out of the poker room went to the craps table saw a lot of people laughing and having fun and i saw people you know with with the dice in their hand and i said you know maybe there's something to this so back back during the message boards and the forums there were all these people proclaiming, you know, godness and, and godlike 
skills. I, I didn't know any better. I thought they were real. And I and I listened to them. And I figured they're out there. People are listening to them. They're talking. They, they must that must be true. Same things happening today with YouTube. There are all these self-proclaimed DIs and self-proclaimed gurus that are pieces of shits that are leaning people the wrong way. And one of the reasons why I'm out here showing my face and saying, telling people not to listen, that's not what DI is all about. These people are leading you the wrong way. Hopefully the new viewers that are listening would understand that you got to vet these people. You got to know what they're all about before you just jump in like I did. I didn't vet them. I I thought I was I was I was an idiot, right? I didn't I didn't listen to the proper messaging. I didn't do my 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 homework. I I I thought that they're out there and people were like saying kudos, yeah, great job and all that. I figured there's something to them. You know, until I met Heavy and 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 Dice Coach, and they they told me no, it's 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 a completely different thing. Mm. Um, the same people now are have moved over to YouTube, and they're doing the same thing to others. They're self-proclaimed, and 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 they honestly give the eye a bad name, but they're like self-proclaimed crap gods, and and a lot of these don't even go to the casino. They make you think they do, but they don't. A lot of them are 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 poor. They don't they, they they live paycheck to paycheck, but they're living an alternate life on the internet. And all I'm saying is anyone that wants to get into this or is in this, do your homework. Don't just listen because don't listen to me because I'm here with John and talking to you, do your homework about, you know, listen about me, ask people about me. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Same thing to others. Or, or else you're going to start going in down, down a rabbit hole. And, you know, you're always going to find yourself in a jam. Now, if you go to the casino just to have fun with friends and, and you lose money that, that, you know, everybody does it right. I was going to the casino because I wanted to make it my, my job. Right. I wanted this to be my work. I wanted to go to the casino and, and, and win money and not have to work because people fed me that bullshit on, sure. on the floor. But then you're in that, then you're in that, 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 what I call the spin cycle. It's like you get in there, you, you want it to be, you want it to be work. You go in, you lose a little bit. And the way to get out of the loss is to go back and back and back and back and try. And then you're looking at the internet, trying to find ways to do it. I've told you my story before. My parents did the same thing. We we had a we had a store, a retail store. My parents owned when I was young, and seasonally you'd lose all the business because it was a touristy kind of area. They would go to the casinos to for work to kind of win the money to keep the store open, right? To make payroll, right? right? Which is a problem. Now they weren't doing it to recover losses, like in your case. You, I think. When I hear you tell your story, what I hear from you is like you felt like the weight bearing down, right, of the losses compounding. My parents did it for a different reason. It was still the same, the same mentality, though. Like, I got to go for a job and do this because it's what I should do. I want to ask you what that was like because I, I've, I've told you this and everybody else before that I had a situation where I, I'd lost the business. And again, my wife and I had lots of, let's just say, interesting conversations around that. Right when, when when you lose a ton of money and it impacts the family, um, you said earlier that you had that problem, but because of the way your finances were, she wasn't aware of it. At some point, she had to become aware of that, right? And the what's the impact like? Like I mean, personally, I like there's there's a little bit of of probably some guilt, whatever you want to call it, maybe shame even in that moment. But how do you recover from? This is what I was doing. This is what's happened. We as a team, me and my wife, you and your wife, need to partner up here. How did that? How did that work? Because I know you've got a lot of got a good a lot of good life coaching from Heavy and others. But how how did I, 
it's just so fascinating, you know, to me was, to, to learn she was, that. She was never aware. She was never aware of the magnitude, but she knew I was losing money. And she's the one that suggested that, you know, I, I, I start doing research and, and look and, 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 and find somebody that that can help not gambling addiction or anything, but somebody that can help me with, with craps as a, on my craps mm. journey. That's how I found heavy to today, unless she sees these videos, like El Toro says, I hope my wife doesn't see these videos <laughs> unless she sees the videos, she doesn't know the magnitude. Uh, you know, part of it is because I don't want to tell her because I'm ashamed of it. But the other part is, you know, I learned from it and it's been a while. It's been a long time. And if this was recent or fresh, then yes, we could talk about it. But, but there's, there's, there's shame, there's shame in admitting you did something wrong or you didn't know what you're doing in anything, but especially mm -hmm. when it comes to gambling, especially when it comes to craps, there's shame in admitting because your ego now gets hurt. Now you have to tell others that were looking up to you and say, Hey, I made a mistake. I'll, I'll give you a quick example. Um, when Ed and I were doing our rolling, I I misread a a dice. I didn't know. I, I all along I thought that the camera was looking down at the video. I didn't know because I'm I'm new at this. I'm not I don't know what I'm doing. Um, <clears throat> people laugh at it, and I hear them laugh, but that's okay. I don't make this stuff up. The, 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 they don't see it, but the dice blends in on my felt, the green one. And the pips, the side pips, sometimes I see them as, as high pips. But anyway, as soon as I saw that, I went and I, I said, I apologize. Because number one, I don't want people to think that I'm, I was making things up. Number two, I have, if I do something wrong, I will, I will admit it because my, 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 I had, I had bigger shame of, of, of bigger things that this is something easy. If you, if you're not going to apologize for this, you, there's a bigger problem, mm -hmm. but, but going in and, and saying, Hey, I have a gambling problem, especially after you've been doing something for a long time, your ego is now busted because you've been telling people, I know what I'm doing. I know of a certain person right now. I'm not going to mention their name. I know of a certain person right now. They are out on, on the internet. They are out on YouTube. That person have lost business. They have lost um, savings. They have lost um, money that they made because of other circumstances. But they're still out there telling people how they can roll and win money. I'm not going to point these people out. They have to deal when, you know, whether, 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 whatever religion they believe in, they have to deal with that. I've experienced this. I'm going to tell you about my experience and my, and I believe that I had a gambling addiction and I didn't tell anybody about it. Heavy noticed that I was doing something wrong with my game and his help helped me recover, not recover my losses, helped me get all my debts because I had a whole bunch of money and I played it right. I don't know if I got lucky or not, but I played it right. And my mind at that point was in the right place. Your mind has to be in the right place. You have to realize that you've been doing something wrong. I took that money and I paid off all my credit cards, all my debts and left just a little bit to start a bankroll with what heavy and dice coach were teaching me. DI taught me discipline and taught me money management. I'm thankful for the DI. DI is not about setting the dice and throwing it. It's a bigger thing. I say it's a way of life. It is a way of life for me. Dice influencing, getting with the right people, took me, got me out of the gambling addiction. And this is not a promo for heavy. I'm just being honest. 
these people were friends to me at a time where I needed friends, not a, not a dice instructor. You know, I can go to my friends and say, I lost all this money. I have a gambling addiction. People don't want to call the 1-800 gambling and stuff like that because they're afraid that the casino will block them from going in because they have a gambling addiction. If you don't want to call a number, talk to a friend. Look, if you have something going on in your life, you know, talk to me. I promise I don't, I don't talk to anybody at all about stuff. Talk to someone. I don't care who that someone is. If whatever, if whatever addiction, if not gambling, if it's drinking, if there's something going on, take it from somebody that's been there. The more you boil it, the more it leans heavy on you. Mm -hmm. It leads you to some dark places that you don't want to go. That's some people have taken that worst, that turned to the worst and went down the dark places and they're no longer with us. I know two people personally because they, their ego and their shame refused them to go and talk to someone. It's, 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 it's a fascinating thing. And, and I, I, I got to reiterate what you said for record here, right? If you think you have a problem, go seek help, right? Number one. And the, the 1-800-GAMBLER is an option, right? That's an option for people to explore, clearly. Um, I think additionally, though, um, you said find friends. And I think for those of us that have, we, we all have friends that gamble now, right? We're all together in this endeavor, right? Us YouTubers, for one, um, are the folks who watch us for two. Um, there's the, and I, I'm going to talk to the guy uh, who runs the NCPG next week about like how do you approach somebody that you see that has a problem because that's an important thing too getting reached out to, but when you identify a warning sign in yourself and like kind of raising your hand and saying hey I think I got a problem, I, I think, you know I'm, I'm a big um pretty religious guy and I, and I kind of feel like like God puts people in your life at the right time for the right reason when you need them. You know, and some people will go to heavy or to dice coach to learn how to throw or learn how to bet and do the class thing. Um, in your experience with them, it was different though. It was more about fix me. And I say me like hardcore, like fix me as a person, right? Yeah. And I think when you went to them and they fixed you as a person, a lot, and again, I wanna really ask you this, this, this one question here because a lot of people will say, you should have went to 1-800-GAMBLER. You should have went to Gamblers Anonymous and never went to a casino again. With that kind of money issues, right? You should have stopped playing. Like, go get, go get actual help, right? Yep. You went after it a different way. You found a guy, or a couple of guys actually, who kind of intervened in your life and said, look, here's, you're just doing it wrong kind of a thing, which is, you know, I try to quit drinking all these times, but I just, I, didn't, I never quit drinking the right way. So it never stuck, right? With gambling, you went at it that way and said, I'm going to fix myself versus just put the, 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 the cork in it and stopping, right? So I, I want to ask you that question. Um, how does that decision get made and how did those conversations go early? And what was the, there had to be a moment when you went, oh, okay, I see what the problem is. Big yeah. part of it sounds like it was discipline, but um, seeking help from somebody who's gonna, whose answer is, you're just not doing it right versus somebody who says you got to stop doing it. And I think there's, th there's those two different ways you can approach this problem. And I want to know why you went the one way instead of the other way. Like what was the impetus there? Yeah. Um, so one, one, of, one of my main problems was that I wasn't losing all the time. If, if, if I had, if I was losing, like if, after the third outing, if I was, you know, lost, 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 I would have given up and just went, did something else. Um, there were times where I, where I won a lot of money and the adrenaline rush of winning that money gives you a false positive that, hey, I could win money, money, money. I'm going to keep doing it. What I wanted to do was not quit. I wanted to to see what am I doing wrong playing so that I can do it right so that I can 
either break even or win, or or if I lose, I don't lose a lot. If I win, I don't, you know, I, it, it, and it wasn't about dice throwing. It was about how to, how to, how to play craps, how to bet that, you know, my problem was I didn't know anything about the game. I would walk up and I would just go 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, 5,000 on anybody, anybody. Cause I figured, you know, Hey, people could get lucky, but I mean, it would be like down the drain, down the drain, down the drain and walk out with casinos. Like what the hell just happened? And when, you know, when I'm heavy, it was like, no, 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 no. You're not going to do that. You're not going to bet on every, anybody. You're not going to do that. We're going to, we're going to, here, here's what we're going to do. So it, so it was, I, I didn't, I didn't know that I had a gambling problem until I, after I took one of the classes and met and talked to dice coach. That's when the mm. light bulb clicked. And that's when I was like, okay, so if I, if I want to build up a bankroll of this, what do I need to do? And they'd say, okay, you need to do this, this, this. So I would take that and multiply it by 10 because I had the funds because I already borrowed it. And as soon as I did it, I would, I would just pay back because I wanted to keep going to, to them. And, 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 you know, if if I had lost everything, I can't go to the classes anymore because I don't have money to gamble. You know, I'm on the street. That's the reason why I went to them. It wasn't about learning how to toss dice. It was trying to understand how, because, you know, they were like sitting there with people, teaching them how to bet and, and doing all that. I wanted to learn how to play the game right. Because if you look, look, I don't care how good you are in tossing the dice. If you don't know how to bet and how to manage money, you're an idiot. You're going to lose everything. Mm -hmm. It's my language there. It's not a one off. It's a combination. It's a combination of knowledge, discipline, you know, you, you got people that say, oh, if you're, if you're an advantage better then you should live in the casino. These people either have too much money to know what to do with it, or they've never been inside of a casino. The casinos are built based on people staying there for long and losing money. If you're an advantage player and you know what's good for you, you make whatever little money you can do and get the freak out of there. Because the longer you stay in the casino, regardless of what table or what game you're playing, you're going to give it back. That free room that they gave you, that, that the free room and free food that I got in comps cost me $20,000. There's a reason why casinos give you a lot of freebies. Because they're making it back, and they may not mean they, they they may not be making it back from me on the craps table. But they're they're making it from my wife on the slot machine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're making it. Yeah. But I, I I didn't know I had an addiction after, until after I talked to these people, and I'm like, okay, I gotta stop. I gotta stop the madness. I looked back once. And, and sometimes you don't know how deep you are until you pause. Once I stopped and I looked at my finances, that's when the oh shit moment realized. And, and, and the decision is, okay, do I, what do I do? And I, I honestly, I think I locked out. I was one of the lucky ones that was able to make a difference and get that money. And, and every time I got it, I paid off and got out of debt mm -hmm. because I wanted to, to my finances separate than my game. And that's why I have different bankrolls. I have a bankroll for my gambling. I have a bankroll for my fun money. I, and I have a gamble bankroll for, for other stuff that I want to do. Like if I want to just go and play roulette or something like that. And those are completely separate from my finances. I will never, ever, I will, I will chop that table behind me that I love so much. And I've been taking care of, I will chop it with an ax and, and, and burn it to the ground before I take $1 out of my savings account and put my family's life livelihood at risk because mm -hmm. of this. I, I put my marriage, I don't have any children. You know, but I put my marriage and I'll put my livelihood at risk because of false positive 
and because I listen to the wrong people claiming they're something that they're not. This will never happen again. Never. And so I will never be in that position. I will stop going to the casino and playing dice before I borrow one dime out of my savings. And that was probably not the case early on, right? Early on, was that how you managed it? Or is that something you got out of uh, some of these sessions that you had? That, that, that level of, of financial discipline, I think, and I talk about that all the time, that's a key thing. Was that something you learned after the fact yes. with Heavy and Dice yes. Coach, or was that something you figured out early on? No, 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 I, I, I learned it from Heavy and Dice Coach because, and, and again, this is just guys, this is not a, this is just the people that helped me out. This is not mm -hmm. a, a promo for them. Sure. But, but they teach money management. They teach all other stuff other outside of just how to hold the dice and throw it. This is some of the stuff that I'm going to help on, on, on the sessions with Ed, you know, about what I learned from them. They, they, they tell you, they tell you, don't come, don't come and take a class and gamble with money that you can't, that, that, that's, that's, that you're going to pay rent with, you know, they will tell you upfront, this is, this is not who we are. And, and, and they, they taught me the discipline of when to be on the table and when to not to be on the table. Everything I know I've done, they gave me the, the, the starting points. And then I've had to experience some of that to get better and better and better. You know, you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't sit at the table and gamble all your money away because then you are gambling. You know, I, you've heard me say this many, many times. In the morning when I go and play at the tables, I play the short game. There's no, short, long rolls happen, but most of them are short rolls. If you don't know how to make money out of a short roll, you need help. I play the short game. I, I, I go in, make money, and leave. I have a win goal. I keep my bankroll intact, and I, I make more money. That, that extra $400, $500 that I win in the session, that's the adrenaline rush to make me happy. And I can have, you know, and if I lose it, okay, you know, the process starts. But it's a discipline. You don't sit there and lose, lose, lose. If I PSO and I PSO again, I'm walking. I'm walking. I'm going to go get a donut, get coffee, enjoy my day. Tomorrow's another day. Casinos are there. They'll be there tomorrow. They'll be there next week. T tables will be there. You don't have to sit there and figure out what the hell's going on and 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 flush your bankroll down the drain because you're trying to figure out what's going on with that session. That's the kind of discipline that I learned from these guys. And that's hard. You know, that's hard to do. And, that, and that's not yeah. just that's not just in craps. That's that's in life in general. You know, if you're starting a business, if you want to do anything, you got to have the you got to have the knowledge, you got to have the skill set and you got to have the discipline. Mm -hmm. Or else you're going to lose your money. I've got a no. couple of questions here for you. Do you mind taking a few uh, audience questions? Oh no, go ahead. Okay, I got one from El Toro. The, his first, he has two questions, but the first one is this. And he says, as an addict myself, how would you advise someone to overcome their pride and admit they have a problem and seek help? Look, first of all, find, find the right person to talk to. If you go and talk to the right person and say, I've got a problem, they're not going to shame you because that's the right person to help you through it. Mm -hmm. The right person is not going to laugh at you. The right person is not going to go and tell tattletale on you. So people, people call the 1-800-GAMBLING-ANONYMOUS because they, these people don't know them. But a lot of them just go through a process and, 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 and you should call them, but talking to somebody that you have trust with, they will, they, if that's a true friend, then they won't shame you. They won't say, well, I told you so and blah, blah, blah. No, they will help you get through the process and they will be with you in case you, um, what's the phrase fall off the wagon. I guess they, that's what they say it. They will be there, but, but. 
you gotta understand also that if if you keep you know relapsing and relapsing and relapsing at some point they're gonna say look i can't help you so so there's a there's there's no shame in talking to the to to, to a friend and somebody that's 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 going to help you if if you if you go talk to the wrong person now how do you how do you how do you identify the right person from the wrong person well that's that's where you know that's where you know who who, who the people that you're that are around you are yeah that's how you find your real friends well it, it's what's interesting is i ha- yeah this is a kind of a weird story but um i had a health scare a, a, many many years ago and the people in our life at the time my wife called for help this really old friend that we had we hadn't talked to them in years she's like i don't know why they were my first phone call i'm like because that's our real friends like it was a weird thing like she called somebody and i think what you're saying is the same thing like you're you're going to reach out to the right person because you're supposed to like that person and that per- your right person better you know like you say no shame help yeah. love all that stuff right lift each other up that's a yeah. that's an important piece to it um, and 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 my my buddy Waylon, you know he and i I'm, i think we're okay he and i may have had a rough start but but i think we're okay now he he, he always put it out in chat if you don't know if you don't know how to bet you're gonna lose and he is so right about, people give him a hard time about it but you, you gotta listen to him he if he is so right about that if you don't know how how to bet how to place the right bet and when to place it you're gonna lose yeah you're gonna no lose. there's a time to do something in the right way and that there's a time not to do anything there there are time for the right there's a time for the right bets at the table and i'm not talking about parents and friends here john i know you're gonna laugh yeah. <laughs> i'm just saying there's a there's a time you know for, for, for sure. anything on the table right if you don't know, I didn't know how to bet. I didn't know how to play the game. You know, if if nothing else, make sure you know how to how to how to play the simple bets or even how the game goes before and you before you go and put real money on it. This is why we do the shows. This is why we do craps. Mm-hmm. This is why we do the the training shows, not to show off. I don't do the the shooting with John with with Ed to show off. I, I've got, I've nothing to show off. I I do it to show people that I could I could you know, hit a 30 roller at any given time. And I can PSO at any given time. But you know, people give Wayne a hard time when he says that. I'm just using him as an example, because I know he's sure. not going to be upset with me. But he knows what he's talking about. Mm-hmm. If, you know, learn if you don't know how to bet, you're going to lose money at the in the long run. In no the question. short term, short term, you may be a winner. Long term, you're going to lose money. I was a winner at the short term. That's why. That's why I kept going. The adrenaline of winning. You know, I, I would win fifty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars on one hand from a shooter, from somebody just just picking the dice and rolling. And I'm like, wow, I could do this for a living. I come in. I come in an hour later, lose it and more. And I'm like, what the hell happened? What did I do wrong? I was doing the same thing I did the, the time before. Hmm. I have a question here from uh, Buckeye Slim Gaming Pit. He says, this is actually dovetails perfectly with what you said there. In your opinion, is there, I'll put the, the question up here, is there a difference between a gambling addiction and a gaming addiction? And like, in other words, is the person who's addicted to craps automatically addicted to gambling? And this, I think, speaks to that adrenaline rush you were talking about. Um, yes, there's a difference. There's a difference. There, there's, there are people that go to the casino and go from one one table to another to another go play roulette they stay there until they have no more money and leave and then they come in after they have some money in their pocket two three weeks later they come in and they lose on slots and stuff like that um i i have i i have a top dollar slot machine addiction i cannot walk by a top dollar slot machine without putting a hundred dollars in it. That's okay. I, I, I'm okay with that addiction, but it's an addiction. Yeah. I cannot walk by a top dollar slot machine 
and just just leave it at that. I gotta put a hundred dollars in. Yeah. The endorphin rush right. is real. That 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 rush is real, and I think that can't be understated. And that's I think yeah. that leads to one leads to the other, right? The addiction to the to that rush of gaming will lead you to the gambling addiction if not if you don't put a pin in it. Yeah. And 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 listen, I, I've been I've been playing craps for a long time. I played it the right the right way, and I played it the wrong way. There is a right way and the wrong way to play. And I'm not I'm not talking about pass line and the don't pass. I'm talking about you can either whether you're doing it for entertainment or whether you're doing it as as something more. It. it you can either spend a lot of money and learn the hard way, or you can spend a little money and gain information. And then you decide what you want to do with the information. People, people, um, down go, go, you know, they, they, they shame others because they wanted to take a class with dice coach, or they wanted to take a class with heavy or somebody. Um, these people have the money to take that class and they, they get information and they can decide what to do with this information afterwards. Nobody mm -hmm. forces anybody to do anything at the table. And, it, you know, people say, well, information is out there for free on YouTube. 99% of the information that's free out there on YouTube is going to cost people a lot of money. There are so many... Well said. So many snake oil salesmen, liars, scum of the earth, scum of the earth, the bottom of the barrel, scum of the earth, that don't care about you or about your money. There are some people that want to make a sell. There are some people, all they want to do is just make other people miserable and laugh at it. That's that's what that, that there are some people well, on if YouTube. You're if you're there to profit it's, it's, off of somebody it's, it's, else, that's the problem, today. right? It's a game. Yeah. Yeah. If you're there to profit off of somebody else's misfortune or, or somebody else's dreams, that's, that's a big problem. Um, I, I got two more for you here before. I know you got to go to work. Um, so we'll make these last two quick. One's for our, our, our Katie's uh, new friend of mine. And I want to, we can both answer this one here. It's uh, just pose this question to Waylon. And I agree with knowing how to bet, but here's the big question. The, but how do you learn how to bet without flushing your money down the drain? And I will tell you this before I let you answer. If you play Crapsy online with all these people, Jeff does Crapsy and George does Crapsy and Joe does it in the morning, you got to go to Crapsy with your actual bankroll and play it your actual way. That's one way to practice. You got to practice you, and you should not practice with your actual money. You have guys throwing dice live every day, myself included, which simulates table conditions. Don't go to Crapsy with three grand and go 1200 inside or 1100 inside because it's fun and you want to be on the top of the board. Go to Crapsy with 500 bucks and bet 44 inside and practice your way every day. Develop the skills to get good before you go with real money. That's, that's my answer to that, but I want you to jump in because you went through this. <laughs> how do you learn how to bet the right way without getting destroyed? It's a great question. Oh yeah, I mean, I I was getting I was taking real money down to, to the craps casinos and losing it uh, until I was shown the right way, and 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 started started practicing it at home, throwing throwing my dice at home. Um, Waylon can tell you when he comes up with a new strategy, he doesn't come up with it. I'm I'm thinking I haven't talked to him, but based on some of his stuff. He doesn't just come up with it in a day and puts it out there and shows it to people. I guarantee you he runs it in his mind on paper 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 times to make sure there are no holes in it before he puts it out there. That's how you need to be with, you know, anybody needs to be with their betting strategy and, 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 and gambling. Um, I, I changed the layout and, and the bounce on my table because I wanted to simulate real casino so that so that when I'm showing people how to how to throw dice on it and and how to overcome bouncy tables, I'll I'll, I'll show the betting also with it what what to do and what not to do. If you want to practice without pre putting real money, take Crapsy seriously when you play Crapsy. 
Agreed. Agreed. All right, last question. Here we go. And this is a great way to end this thing is we're going to revisit a topic from earlier. And this is coming from El Toro. I know that somebody else in the audience had said earlier, too, that they were an addict. Um, not gambling addict, but an alcohol, um, an alcohol addict. And here's El Toro's question. He says, as an alcoholic, I had to quit starting to drink. No off switch. I didn't learn how to drink correctly. And I, we had said this earlier about the gambling piece. Are you saying that learning how to bet correctly cured the addiction or did I misunderstand? Um, no, I'm, I'm still, I'm still a, a craps game addict. I will go to the casino and play, but I learned where my tolerance level is so that it, so that the addiction doesn't overtake me anymore. I, I've never had a drinking problem, never had a drink in my life, but if I was, and I'm the last one person to tell somebody about drinking, but if you learn how to take a drink or two and not let it overtake you, then, then it's, then you're, you're controlling the addiction and it's not controlling you. That's, and that's, that's the bottom line. You, you, you are, you control you. Don't let the addiction control you. And as long as you have control on that, you'll be okay. It's when you lose control. And that's where the discipline comes in. I'm still an addict. I'm still a, a, a craps addict. Because I go to the game and, and I play. But I don't let the addiction take over me. I'm... I'm that this my discipline that I will always have will 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 control that addiction and I prove that by walking away from the table by not putting money on the table when I don't feel like I need to play that's how I prove it to myself every time it's that's very very difficult um, way to talk about it I, it because I think some things like Alcohol, and maybe I'm wrong about this. Maybe this is more of an expert question to ask, but like, I feel like alcohol um, is a more, way more chemical and, and drug addictions are way more chemically based, right? You're saying you can, you can now have the discipline to stop or have a different focus where you know, you're, you're not trying to hit a home run. You're trying to get your little bit of money and get the hell out of there every day and you're feeding Feeding the beast to some degree, but with a with a much smaller set of pills. Um, boy, it's 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 tough because I I know people who have suffered from alcoholism, and suffer with with pornography addictions too. And to them, they they say it's chemical. I can't I I can't, like there's no stopping it. My brain, I get the palpitations. I I have to, I got to go to that 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 website. I have to go to the closet and get a get a bottle. Gambling yeah. is different because. Part, it and maybe it's worse because there's online gambling now, but gambling, you have to like go to the bank, take up money, take a trip in the car somewhere to do the act. You know what I mean? And the danger of gambling is the, I guess they're, all addictions are dangerous, the, but the, the, the final impact of a, of a bad gambling addiction is ruin. These things all end the same way. It ruins your family, it ruins your life, it ruins your finances, and it can be a big deal. But you've wrestled control out of it because you've exercised some discipline, which is it's interesting and it's admirable that you can do that. Walking away, yeah. walking away from a from a table that's paying you money is very hard. But I but I, I do it because I've set limits to myself. And it, it it doesn't matter. I could stay on that table and maybe make another thousand. But I could stay on the table and lose ten thousand. I'm not going to take that chance. I walk away when I, you know, regardless. Mm -hmm. Alcohol, drugs is is different. And and what I would what I would suggest to folks is find somebody that has been through that journey and has overcome it, because they will be able to give you information about their own experiences 
that you can process and 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 just like everything in life there's good bad and ugly take the good out of everything and you can leave the bad and the ugly by the side um i've lost friends because of this um i've lost time away from my family time with my family because of this um these are things that i cannot get back no matter how how hard i try and um i try to make it up to my wife now she has a david yurman addiction and if you don't guys don't know what david yurman is go look it up it's a jewelry store and so if she ever if ever she wants something she gets it she put up with a lot and she didn't know what was going on and you know I, i don't care if she wants a new car tomorrow and if i go if i go in debt to do that i'll go get her a new car even though she doesn't know about a lot about this stuff i treat it as if she knew and she's gone with it through me hmm. and and i i got to run but i will say look even if you don't think you have a problem regardless of what that is talk to somebody about it just just chit chat with a friend if nothing else it makes that friendship a lot stronger couldn't agree more could not agree more that's a it's a huge thing having having friends having people you can rely on having somebody you can open up to and be vulnerable with is is a huge thing and like you said earlier um that friend if you if you are that friend for somebody you're you're put into a into a non-judgmental situation right you're you're there to offer support and be the, and be the person that helps that helps that other friend of yours through the journey right that's you're there to kind of be i always use the you know the the footsteps poem that you probably all know about right that's you got to be jesus in that situation you got to carry your friend through and have the, you got to be the single set of footprints sometimes for somebody else and you've got to be willing and this is hard um you got to be willing to 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 accept the help and i think reaching out as part of it accepting help from somebody else is even harder and i think that's very difficult for people to allow yourself to be carried by somebody ego ego wise and all of that it's incredibly difficult but it's all about grace it's all about giving grace and receiving grace and sometimes that's that's a big part of it too we have to all realize that and i think that's a mentally a very difficult thing difficult place to be so i know you got to go to work and i want to i want to end it here and thank you uh, for being so wide open and transparent with everybody difficult no conversations worries. to have <laughs> for and, sure and and you know i mean i know people have questions and i'll make myself available whether it's online or or offline you know um i don't care who you talk to but if you think some people don't even know they have a problem but if you think that you if you, if something is bothering you regardless of what it is don't keep it bottled up go talk to somebody that's 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 the advice i give for sure all right let's end it there go back to work i i appreciate your time everybody else here does too we love you and um again i i can't i can't thank you enough for for being so wide open and 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 vulnerable with us today thank you no worries no worries love everyone have a good weekend and we we'll, we'll see you bye gargoyle thank you all right let's put wayland's comment up here because i think it's a good way to end this thing have a great day christ is king um and you're welcome um i'm glad we had a chance to to do this today um we've been talking about it for a couple of weeks he and i um i know that um he's going to kick off a series with jeff and ed i think next week right next week jeff confirmed that in chat um and a lot of what they're going to talk about is what he talked about today which is um and i've been talking about it too it's just the mental side of all of this right like if you can throw dice or not it doesn't really matter right like and i think he says this a lot the di lifestyle right it's not about sniping numbers and being the greatest tosser in the world there's a discipline that goes along with that and i say a lot like i i really like to throw the dice even though i suck at it i enjoy the catharsis of doing it right and there's a discipline to that like you know and i think if your brain is wired like his was on the dopamine whatever thing right um having the discipline to like get up 
practice through your thing and you get your, your brain kind of reprogrammed into being marching down the down a straight line, that helps a lot, you know? And I think, uh, anyway, for what it's worth, um, I, I think that that's, the mental side of this is the most important side of it. And I wanna make sure that we finish with what he said at the end there, which is, if you think you got a problem, reach out. If it's 1-800-GAMBLING, if it's to your wife or your husband, if it's to your best friend, or if it's to maybe not your best friend, but somebody you think is gonna understand what you're going through, reach out. You know, I mean, and I'm not gonna call people out here in chat, but there are people in chat who have spoken up and said, I have a problem, I have had a problem. Those are the people that might be able to guide you in a good direction, right? Because they've been through it. They've, they've walked the journey already. And finding that support system is an important piece. So um, develop a support system. You should have it anyway, but um, you know, if, if you if you fall into any of these categories, let me go back to the other screen here real quick. I want to go back here. I'll put myself back on screen. If you fall into any of these categories, these warning signs, these warning signs, by the way, um, come to us from the NCPG. This is the things you should be watching for, right? If you're thinking about gaming 24-7, if you fee feel a need to bet more money, bet more often, if you're irritated because you're not playing, if you feel out of control, if you're gambling, even when you know the consequences, if your family withdraws from you, or if you withdraw from your family, or you're experiencing financial instability because of all this, that's what addiction is, folks. Um, and that's the time to raise your hand and reach out. So thanks, Gargoyle, for sharing. Um, and again, we're gonna be talking to somebody from 1-800-GAMBLER uh, one day next week. I'll have him on as well, and he can talk to us from their side of it and what, it, what it's like for them um, to receive the request for help and how they approach folks that feel like they have a problem and, and, and the ways that they intervene, like Argoyle said, it's somebody who doesn't know you. So their, their, their way of dealing with you, not knowing you is very, very different than if you were to call me and say, John, I need help. And if I jumped into your life and wanted to help you out, that would be a different experience than working with a, with an organization like 1-800-GAMBLER. But both are, 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 like beyond viable options for you. So um, if you see something, say something. If you feel something, raise your hand, folks. That's the message today. And uh, with that said, I'm gonna stop the show here. Um, we will do our more normal show um, with all the fun talk about how I, how I did in the garage next week. So with that said, y'all have a great weekend. Um, happy Friday, and I will see you all on Monday. God bless every one of you and have a good one. Bye.